you very much, Lieutenant General. It's very difficult to speak after Professor Mehta. Uh, I will uh, give you a few things that I, is, uh, I am a diplomat working at the EU Embassy here. I'm a director in charge of science and education. And uh, as my bio was read out, uh, I have been working in diplomacy in different parts of the world for the European Union. And it's a pleasure also being here on the same panel as Professor Ashok because I've been more than a de decade at the board of the Club of Rome at the EU chapter. And it has always inspired me uh, that we should think of others. Actually, uh, Professor Ameta, you quoted Mahatma Gandhi. I will go there to his birthplace on the 2nd of October because myself, I'm born 97 years on the same day as Mahatma Gandhi. And, uh, and my own mother, when she delivered me, I was born on her birthday. So we have some links. Let me maybe in just a few minutes give you my own feeling of AI and SDG and how myself as a diplomat I am acting. For me, AI is just a tool and I can tell you well because I am myself a biomedical and a robotic engineer. So I've been developing systems, developing AI systems, uh, robotic systems. AI is a hammer, but you can use a hammer very well to nail, to put a nail to repair this board, for example. You can use a hammer with, by a judge. You can use a hammer if you want to make a robbery. So these are tools, and we have to know the limit of tools. And these are, I've been said since this morning in terms of regulatory aspects. And I will tell you first, um, probably my, where I see that we lack, uh, lack to look at AI. I didn't hear so much so far about financing responsibility of the financial world. Probably from, I'm 56, when I was born, financial world of course existed, but what I can see is a rapidity where, which we are faced now is not the rapidity of technology. Not anymore, it's a rapidity by which the financial world exploit resources, being natural resources, we have known this with the Club of Rome, but now people. And I think AI has a big responsibility to be used very fairly by the financial world. So we at the European Union have been uh, developing and starting what we started many years ago. You may have heard corporate social responsibility, triple bottom line, I remember or 20 years ago, I was already working on this issue with the FTSE, with the New York Stock Exchange, how to put the responsibility of companies. But now it has changed. It's not anymore companies. It's people. So you invest yourself, you are part of the system in which you degrade the system. And this is probably the limit of AI. So AI itself has a danger. And it's AI, artificial intelligence, uh, even though it has mostly positive effects, it carries a huge danger in itself. So we need the role of government. I am there from, from a gov to speak to you about a go uh, as a government official. Uh, but in my personal capacity, I can tell you that it's like if I am in a car with an accelerator to use technology and with a brake to say, no, we should stop. We must make a pause. We must have everybody on board, NGOs, uh, civil society. We must think of the system at the same time as we build the system. So it's, it's extremely difficult. But if we don't do that, we are already now seeing the, the effect uh, that uh, Professor Ameta and everybody this morning was, was mentioning. Those are immediate effects because the money is flowing much faster than technology, and, uh, and uh, venture capitalists are in fact killing and, and uh, breaking the branch where they are sitting. Financial capital, if I give you a few examples that we have in Europe, for example, we used to have in, in cities, in villages, a uh, uh, restaurant. Venture capitalists came, they say, okay, we have a good mar marketing tool, you are all part of a brand. And slowly, because by the principle of equities, they invest in the restaurant, not because they like the food, but because they want to make profit for their uh, uh, stakeholders, which is very, very natural. 
But a few years down the line, the restaurant is bankrupt because the restaurant has to reimburse uh, every month a certain amount that is always increasing. And at the end of the day, it's like we, ha I give you a second example in Europe. We use robotics in Ireland, for example, for milking uh, cows, automatic. Those systems are so expensive that the farmers enter in an economic system where they borrow from the bank. And for the first 10 years, for the first 15 years, they refund the bank. They make no profit. It's the same with solar energy. We had it in Europe. I don't know the situation in India. I've only been three months in India. It's a huge bankruptcy. Citizens have been a, a fraud most, most of the time by governments, in fact, by local governments. And now they, are, they have an old system on their roof, which is 10 years old in terms of technology that has not given them a penny. Uh, so we must think of aligning accounting rules with the resources. This is my first point. The second negative point on AI is, was mentioned a little bit today, was the huge energy consumption that it carries using IT. I told you I am a telecom engineer, so I know how an IT system, it's amazing, it's amazing. The footprint of AI is not measured. And if you Google, you can even see that Microsoft was not establishing its own footprint just a few years ago, Google, uh, the GAFA, were not establishing, not divulging their own footprint. We have a problem here. We must do it. And it's again back to the uh, responsibility of business. My third thing, my third point is, because I have always in back in my mind, uh, uh, my, my thinking as a Club of Rome member is, you cannot uh, predict the future if you don't look at the past. So when I, I, because we finance a lot of studies as government officials about foresight planning, what's going to happen in 30 years, 50 years, and I always say with the great people who are doing foresight, okay, you want to give me a foresight in 50 years, so in, 20, in 2070, but please, I don't want. I want first you give me a back, back sight. <laughs> what happened since 1970? And uh, in 1972, you probably, and Professor Koshla, of course, knows, uh, 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 Denny Meadows and many colleagues at the Club of Rome uh, already put the warning on limit to growth. This was in 1970, so 50 years back. But what, where will we be in 2070? I have to share something because a few weeks ago, the EU president, uh, the European Commission president, von der Leyen, was here, and I was myself in meeting with her and Prime Minister Modi. And independently from the political uh, uh, analysis, it was very interesting. Modi and his team were saying India will become carbon independent, carbon independent before celebrating the 100 years of independence. And I say, well, it's great because it must be so. Uh, you have to be carbon independent in India. So, and this is soon. This is maybe from now, 2020, by 2070, uh, it's going to happen, uh, or earlier. So you cannot do foresight if you don't look where you have been, despite the, 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 the scale, despite the acceleration of change. Uh, time has an absolute value that you must respect. So this were, uh, and just to close on this last, last third point on, on foresight, and I will advise you, because uh, Professor Meta was mentioning matrix, I mean, I, I believe most of you who has, has seen uh, Back to the Future, it was in a movie in, in 1982. I would like to know who has seen it, if you could raise your hand. It's a great, great movie. It's, uh, it's amazing because uh, we often, f we must build confidence in our future, but to do so, we must look backward. And it's not because I'm getting older, is because I strongly believe of the human responsibility is based on values, on, on fundamentals, on evolution, on very normal evolution, even though those, this type of, those evolutions are now endangered by the speed of the change. Uh, human beings cannot necessarily cope with speed, and I am not telling you about nature, if nature can adapt as quick as humans. 
So I'm ending here my uh, brief uh, introduction uh, because I want to give time to, to, to have questions. But uh, I can show you my notes. I had my note was what I was going to say. I had only a few words. But because I was listening since, uh, since lunchtime, I started to ri uh, write what I was hearing. And I am, was very pleased, uh, Mr. Moss, for uh, you inviting me because I've learned as much as I try to transmit now. Thank you to everybody in the room and on the panel. Thank you.